Welcome back to the Plays With Cars YouTube channel. Another episode of Project Cobra. That's right. It emerged. It emerged from the garage for the first time since, I don't know, probably the last Cobra video. Um, as you guys know, if you've watched any of my other videos, it has snowed like 18 times up here, um, which has been ridiculous and winter's been really hard. So the, the Cobra has sat in there and literally leaked on the cardboard. Um, all winter long. I just got it back out. It's not even really that nice of a day. We got some pretty gnarly clouds looking up, but um, I really just wanted to get it out and get it started and kind of let it warm up uh, and do its thing. Maybe take it on a drive today. We'll see. Um, you can see I don't have much in the way of tread left <laughs> um, all the way around, but you know, um, it gets by in the rain as long as you're careful. But I did do a little bit of work to the Cobra while it was in the garage that I kind of wanted to share with you guys. Uh, to show you what kind of wiring nightmare I've got going on. So when I bought this car, it had uh, an aftermarket deck in here uh, that was running a subwoofer uh, that was in the back here behind the seats. Um, and then it, uh, or an amp, and then it had a, a subwoofer and a box and stuff like that. And that was all like bolted to the back of the seats and kind of in the trunk and stuff like that. Um, they also had leather interior. I traded somebody my leather seats for their cloth ones um, to get the manual tracks for the driver and passenger side because um, that saves like 75 pounds a side on Fords, no joke. Um, they're really, really, really heavy. Um, the full like 14-way power adjustable seats, and this one had both of them. Um, so those are all gone. These are manual because I really just needed the tracks. I'm going to use these tracks with the new Black Cobra seats I have um, for the interior swap. But anyways, um, so in here is kind of a wiring nightmare. In fact, underneath here, if I can get it up to show you, there's, you can see, wiring, ah, come on, wiring hell. All that is still left in the car from that crazy stereo system. Um, which is no bueno. That's weight. Um, it sucks. There's wiring problems. In fact, when you hit the cruise control, look, not, not the horn, the cruise control. Ready? Yeah. That's what we've got going on. So uh, I've got a, just an, an old school Alpine deck from like 2010 that I was going to put in here just so I had some tunes because it does have the door speakers and the back speakers still. They're um, infinity units, but you kind of can't with these. This car had the mock 460 sound system, which is really cool when it came out, but it uses this built-in amplifier right here that lives underneath everything, and there's just plug after plug after plug after plug, um, and they didn't use any of this. Um, they tapped into, they had a plug plugged into one of these to tap into, like, the power and ground, and that was it. All of the speakers and stuff are wired on their own separate circuits. Um, you can't even really buy uh like plug and play harnesses for these because the box system is so ridiculous to try and work with. Uh, so I gotta like wire it up myself, build my own harness or something. But that also means I want to dig all of this junk out um, if I want to have tunes in this car again. And since I am taking literally the entire interior apart to put in the new carpet and the new seats and, and the new door panels and all that stuff. I might as well do this at the same time. So I did finally take the stereo out. It had a Pioneer unit in here that was actually pretty decent. Like I said, I, if you watched my garage uh, rehab, uh, I put that in a buddy's car. Um, so that's all, all gone from here now. So I got all that stuff out. I got all the center stack stuff out. And I started starting to kind of like take things out of this interior so that we can start working on it. Um, but also drag racing season has started. They had opening uh, day last weekend. I kind of wanted to take it this weekend. It's not ready. It needs an oil change. It's got a drip that I can't find that I'm pretty sure is the oil cooler, which on these is a, a sandwich. It lives in between the oil filter and the, the block. Um, so i got to take a look at that when I'm changing the oil. Um, but yeah, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do something about the wheels and tires maybe even before going the first time because um, these are like used up and done for and, and whatnot. So yeah, I got a couple little maintenance things to do to, to get it ready, but there's also Track Night in Americas, and I really want to sign up for one of those. Um, so I will keep like this set up for uh, Track Night and, and um, do that. So more than likely, um, I think the fronts on these are a little worn, and I think the backs are okay. 
Uh, I might put those back Falcons on the front, get new ones for the back um, for the road race setup. Or maybe even just go to a square setup for track days. I'm not sure yet. Um, but the car has so much rake in it, it's hard to run a big tire up front. Um, and these are these are pulled and rolled already. Like, you can't really do anything else with these. So, And at full compression, this goes all the way in. That's actually why the horn honks. The, hor the harness in this fender has been rubbed by the tire and destroyed the wiring in there. Uh, so the crews and the horn are all screwed up. i got to get in there and fix that. And and uh, built a shield for it so the tire can't run through it anymore. So I got some things to do before a track day, but drag racing's a little different. As long as it doesn't drip, uh, it's pretty good for drag racing. So I just gotta change oil and track down that drip. And, and um, But yeah, it'd be cool to like kind of pull some weight out of it and see if we can't start knocking down times. It's best so far as a 13-4 at like 103 and a half miles an hour. Um, and that was with the old 327 gear. Now it's got the 355 gear because uh, it's got the Mach 1 rear end in it. Um, so yeah, it'd be fun to see what the gearing does and taking some weight out. I could take out the back seat, maybe clip some more of those wires. I can kind of take a, an easy 30, 40 pounds out of the car, you know, kind of like that. Um, maybe I've got my spare drift wheels and stuff too. Um, maybe put some smaller front tires on it so I'm not pushing 275s around. It, you know, there's some, it's a couple little tweaks we could do to see if we can't better that time and get down to more of like a 13.2, 13.1, maybe even a 13.0, because I'd really like to see this car go 12s this year um, on the all-motor. Uh, I'd kind of like to do that before buying drag radials. That'd be that'd be really nice, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, that's that's the plan for Cobra. We're going to do a track night in America, at least one, if not two, at PIR. We're going to do some drag racing. Uh, going to do that interior rehab and the stereo. So those are kind of the projects that are coming up on it. But I wanted to, wanted to let you all know it lives, and I have touched it. <laughs> it's not just Project Porsche around here. We got we got other things. So, um, and spoiler alert for people that follow Project Mazda, I bought an all new suspension for it the other day. It's on its way here now. Um, so we'll have some fun videos on that one too. So uh, as it gets nicer out, I'll work on other projects. Um, we'll work on things other than the Porsche. Uh, I promise you. So yeah, that's what's going on with uh, Project Cobra.